I know you, you talked last night. I just uh, want to ask a little bit about, you know, when you're having to grind a little bit like that with the penalties and, and obviously shorthanded situations, uh, you know, how challenging that can be for everybody to kind of, you know, find a little rhythm in a game like that. Um, it's for, for, it's tough for guys that don't kill penalties. I think that's something because it's oftentimes your guys that you, you lean on to generate offense for your, your team. They're sitting on the bench too long. So um, the five on three, killing off the five minute major, um, that takes the rhythm and flow away from those type of players. So that's why it's so important to make sure that you are disciplined. And, um, any good team, they don't take a lot of penalties. They'll play hard, they all understand that, but they make sure they stay out of the box because it keeps everybody involved in the game and you give yourself a better chance to win when you're five on five. Connor's area's had so many successes this year. You touched a couple days ago. And Connor? Then, yeah, Connor. Uh, and there may be being a little bit of a dip since the injury, and obviously he, he was sad yesterday. But what do you want these last seven games to look like? Um, I want them to look like his first game. Okay. Um, so when he comes and plays the game, I want him to have an energy and enthusiasm about him and a, a level of compete that um, is starting to set himself apart from other players. So since he's come back from his injury, I think he's been a step behind. Um, yesterday was a chance for him to reset and have a, a good understanding of where he has to go for his last number of games here. Probably predictable that for a young player in his rookie season, there would be sort of a, a maybe a dip like that at some point? Sure, but you don't want to see it. So I, I don't, Connor's different than some others because he's been with us all year. So um, we have an expectation of where his game can be at. Uh, we have a good understanding of what he's capable of bringing to the table for our team. So that's what we expect out of him all the time. And when it slips, we want to make sure he realizes it and gets himself back on track right away. Is that Ryan. message, message kind of like, hey, it is a mental reset, not necessarily a punishment or whatever, uh, how it could be taken? I don't ever think they're punishments. I mean, I mean players may look at it that way. But for us, it's um, we have identities or we have ways that we expect our players to play and Connor's a guy that um, I feel like makes people around him better when he's competitive and when he's controlling the puck and the prior six games that hasn't been there so it's just a chance for him to um, take a deep breath and recognize what he has to do every day and you look for the remaining games that we have and, and down the road he has to have a real good grasp on that because uh, he's going to be an important part of our team remaining of this year and moving forward. So um, letting him off the hook isn't the right way to do it. Maybe, maybe this is sort of going to what you just said, but there's going to be people who say, oh, a team that's focused on the future shouldn't be scratching kids at this time of year. Is there, from your standpoint, what's the value of not going with that mentality and, and sort of going yeah. the other way? So for me, that's a good question. I mean, yeah, we're not in the playoffs right now, <clears throat> but I don't believe in giving free games to people just because they're young. Um, what type of message and lesson are they learning along the way? Um, I, I think if you want to see the way a game should be played, you look at someone like Mackenzie Weger. Right now, he's playing every game like it's his last game. And that's the expectation we have for all of our players. And just because they're young or someone that's up and coming um, should not be a reason why they're getting games. They should deserve the games. What, uh, you mentioned Mackenzie. What would impress his coach more, 20 goals or 200 block shots? Uh, I think well, both. Everything about his play over the last little while has been awesome. You know, he's, he's one of our guys that I feel like has um, one figured out how to enjoy himself uh, while he's playing the game, but yet he's found a way to raise his competitive level to something I haven't seen since he's been here. So um, you can tell when you look at him um, that he's, he's, he's pleased with where his game's at. And when you watch him play, he's doing all the things that we ask of him to do right now. So he's been real important for us this year. Um, and I think his game is still going to continue to grow. And whether it's the goal scoring or just his willingness to to be a really good team player with all the shot blocks that he's had, that stuff matters. And as I mentioned earlier with Connor, whether we're out of it or in it, there should never be a change in how you play the game. And he's been a great example of that. How, how has he grown as a leader? It seems like he, he comes out in front of us a lot more frequently after tough moments. Like, how does this guy evolve as a leader? Well, he speaks um, from the heart a lot, a lot of times. And sometimes when I read his comments, I'm like, ooh, weeks. But he's a, <laughs> he's a very passionate guy. And I think when you look at his, how he's evolved, I mean, well, one thing that we saw from him last year, you could tell when he got frustrated on the ice. Um, earlier this year, you could tell when he got frustrated on the ice. You could probably hear it um, at the same time, and you don't see that 
anymore. He does a much better job of controlling his emotion. Um, he does a much better job when there's a mistake that's been made. He just moves past it and lets it go and he focuses on his next shift. Um, but he still has the, the passion to compete and he lets the people in our dressing room know it. So I feel like he's, he's just done a much better job of controlling his emotions in the right way. And that, those emotions, I guess, when a, a Zeri or someone else, like young players feed off of that. So it's gotta be really important as well when a veteran like that is, is kind of a little more, not too high, not too low type of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, he has to stay um, the same. Um, mm -hmm without losing the competitiveness that everybody sees that he has right now. Have you, uh, have you had a chance to take a look at the hit from Martin Pospisil last night? I have. Any, uh, any thoughts on it now? Um, I, you know, when you, we have the ability to slow everything down, um, as everybody does with video, and the point of contact, he's got feet on the ice and his arm is down by his waist. Now you can bump it ahead one frame and it looks like his arm might get a little bit higher, but the point of contact, He's on the ice and his arm is lower. So um, with Marty, we don't want to have him change the way he plays. It's just a matter of making sure that um, he's on the line, not over the line, uh, because he's too important of a player for our team right now um, to be missing time sitting in the penalty box for one or missing a game. Um, you know, because of a suspension or something like he just came off of. So he's a driver on our team, and it's important for him to recognize that we need to have him around, play the same way, but on the line, not over it. How do you, how do you deliver that message? Because I, I would imagine that's a tough thing to do, to, to straddle the line but not go over it. Like, what, what's key in, in delivering that message? Yeah, I think you just you, you continue your conversations with him. I think that's important. Um, but I also think it comes with maturity and, and playing in the league a little bit longer, where he'll recognize um, certain situations where there, are, yeah, I can go right through this guy, or maybe I have to um, slow up a touch in this situation. But the the fine line for me is, um, he is who he is, and he needs to play the game a certain way. And it's just making sure that he continues to work on on people, that side of it. Sorry, people are going to look at the latest one and say he he was just suspended a month ago. But have have you seen? Like, have you seen effort to toe that line a little bit better in, in the past four weeks? For sure. I mean, absolutely. He's like, there's nights on our in our games where he's had seven to ten hits in a game, and uh, none of them over the last month have been ones where you're like, ooh, that's a bad hit. Um, so he's still doing a job of finishing his hits. Um, he's trying to play hard. He's trying to be first on the forward check, which we want him to do, all those things. Um, so the last night would probably be the first time that you can even remotely question one of the hits. Coach, maybe just a word on the news that came out this morning on Oliver Shillington, mm -hmm. nominated for the Master Temple. Yeah, and that's a, a, a great nomination for us. And I, I, I think everybody recognizes his story and, and what's gone on over the last couple of years and for him to persevere and, and continue to believe in himself through all the challenges that he had um, makes me very proud of him. Um, and I think it makes his teammates very proud of him. And uh, he's very deserving of that nomination.